Using a place value chart is going to be rather simple as long as you understand the makeup of your number. If you can understand and break down what your number really represents, what it means, then using a place value chart is going to be super simple. So before we get into anything else, let's make sure we have that good understanding of what our number represents. And when I talk about that, I'm really talking about place values. What is the place values within your number? So let's start with a very simple number. Let's say we have the number eight. What does eight represent? Well, eight represents eight ones, right? So you have eight ones. If you were to add up all these ones, you would have eight of them. So eight represents eight ones. Cool, simple. How about a slightly bigger number? What about 58? So we could do 58 ones, but that's pretty inefficient. So instead of 58 ones, let's break this up into our expanded form of 50 and eight. Now we already said that eight represents eight ones. 50 can also represent 50 ones, but we just said that's pretty inefficient. So is there another number that we can use to represent this 50? So how about tens instead of ones, how many tens can we break this into? Well, this is going to be five tens, right? This was eight ones and this is five tens. Now we've already taken that into consideration. We've already talked about the eight. So we're going to focus just on the 50 here and this 50 can be broken into five tens. So when we put both of that together, this 58 means that we're going to have eight ones and how many tens? Five tens. So we see how we're going to break down this place values that this number is going to have. How about this number? We have 358. Now we talked about eight. This is how many ones we have, right? We talked about this five here. This represents how many tens we have. Can you guess what this three represents? How many what? Hundreds. This is going to be how many hundreds we have. And we can see that if we broke this into an expanded form. So expanded form is going to say 300 plus 50 plus 8. Now we've talked about 50 and 8, right? This is how many ones. This is, you know, you can break this into different tens. So we're not going to necessarily focus on this part. We're just going to be focusing on these 300. How many hundreds can you break this into? Well, this is going to be three separate hundreds. Therefore, this three really does represent what we thought it did. So now that we know what each of these numbers within 358 represents, how do we use that in our place value chart? If we're given a place value chart like this, this is pretty much asking us to tell it for your given number, how many ones you have, how many tens you have, and how many hundreds you have. But we just figured that out for our number 358. So now that we know what this represents, let's put it into our place value chart. This tells us we have eight ones, we have five tens, and we have three hundreds. So you see, filling out your place value chart is quite literally just writing your number into the place value chart as it is. However, understanding your place value chart breaks down into what we just talked about. What does each of these numbers truly represent. So now that we talked about your three digit numbers, let's move into some numbers that are slightly bigger than this. Here we have a six digit number and we want to break down what each of these numbers truly represents for this big number. If you can read this number, breaking this number down into what it represents will be much easier. And one easy way that I found to help read big numbers is to first name your commas. If you're starting from the right, you can name your commas as you run into them. And our very first comma is always going to be called the thousand comma. After you name your comma, you can break this big number into smaller groups of numbers, no more than three. So I'll circle this one and box this one. Now that we've broken up our big number into smaller groups, we can start reading the individual groups to make sure we can read those before we move on to the bigger number, right? What does this smaller number say? That's 362. How about this smaller number? 362, right? Or if you want to just say 362, instead of having the and, that's perfectly okay. Now that we know that we can read what's in the individual groups, 
putting everything together, including our comma name, we're going to have 362,362. That was how we read our big numbers. But did you notice something? Before and after your comma, you're pretty much saying the same exact words, right? 362, 362. And we already talked about how to do our breakdown for three digit numbers. So what's the breakdown for this? Well, this is telling us how many ones, tens, and hundreds we have. So if we were to do a place value chart for this group, we would get something along the lines of this. And I'm gonna do some shorthand here. This is going to be our ones, tens, and hundreds, right? Ones, tens, and hundreds. And this is two, six, and a three here. Represents how many hundreds, how many tens, and how many ones. Well, we're reading the same exact thing here, right? So what's stopping us from doing the same exact place value chart? So let's do that. We're gonna have the same exact place value chart, hundreds, tens, and ones, and three, six, two. The only thing we have to do now is account for our commas. Because this was before the comma and not after the comma, we have to tweak our names just a bit. However, the breakdown is gonna be exactly the same. So I'm gonna erase this so I have more space so I can show you the proper names that you're gonna be using for the headers whenever you're before the comma. Now I said whenever you're before the comma, you have to take into account the comma name. Our very first comma that we run into is the thousand comma. So we need to make sure that our place value chart for this group has thousands in it. This thousand comma means that this is our thousand group here. So instead of hundred, we're gonna have hundred thousand. Instead of tens, we're gonna have 10,000. And instead of ones, you can either have 1,000 or you can even get rid of one altogether and just have thousand. But you see you're filling out the same exact way that you did when you were after the comma. You're still gonna be breaking up into your three sections and instead of having ones, this one place is going to be replaced by whatever your comma name is. And then you're still gonna have tens and hundreds except you're gonna have the comma name after it. So let's put everything together for this big number and fill out the actual place value chart that you're going to have when you have a number this big. So when you have a number this big, you're gonna have a place value chart that looks something like this, where you're 100,000, 10,000, 1,000, 100, tens, and ones. And to fill this in, you're quite literally just gonna write the number as is. 362,000, right? 360. Two, write it out just as you have, and you know what each one of these represent. So understanding what this number represents makes understanding your place value chart much easier. However, filling out your place value chart is quite literally just writing your number. But what do you do when you have bigger numbers than even thousands? We're gonna be replicating all the steps. So let's see how that plays out for a much bigger number and make sure that we understand what it's supposed to look like when you're placing it into your place value chart. So let's say we have a number this big and a place value chart this big. Now forgive me, I have very limited space so I have to use some shorthand, but I'll read out what each one of these actually say. This is ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, ten billions, hundred billions. So this is a pretty large place value chart and it can get much bigger than this. However, let's say we were given this place value chart for this big number. The first thing you should know how to do is read this number because you should be able to check to make sure whatever your final result is, it kind of makes sense. So let's first read this number. And remember, we're going to be naming our commas from the right. So this is the thousand comma. This is the million comma and this is the billion comma so if you were to read this you would say 37 billion 829 million 112 thousand 
57. So now that we know how to read this, let's fill this place value chart in. And remember I said, it's as simple as writing it in. However, you don't wanna just write it in all willy nilly because you're not guaranteed to have the same exact amount of spaces as you have for your number. So what I recommend is whenever you're writing your number, start it from the right, start from your ones and go up this way. Similar to how you're traveling across this number to name your commas, start from the one. So we have seven ones, five tens, we have no hundreds, so there's a zero here. Make sure you put that zero. We have two thousands, we have one ten thousands, we have another one for a hundred thousands, we have nine millions, we have two 10 millions, we have 800 millions, we have 7 billions, and we have 3 10 billions. However, we see there are no 100 billions here. If you were to just start filling this in, you may have put your 3 here, and then you probably would have had nothing for your 1s, so you may have even made a mistake of putting a 0 here. So now that we filled everything in, let's check our work really briefly to make sure we didn't fill in something extra. When we read this number, we didn't read anything in a hundred billions, did we? No, we said 37 billion. There were no hundred billions here, so it makes sense not to have any hundred billions. If we had something in a hundred billions here, this would contradict what we read. We don't want to do that. But we see there are no hundred billions and we have 10 billions, right? 37 billion. We have some 10 billions here. So we know that we started correctly. We didn't fill in something that we shouldn't have filled in to start with. So even if you forget to start from the right, as long as you're checking what your actual number reads as and you're not filling in anything extra, that should be good enough to catch any mistakes as well. So filling in your place value chart is really rather simple. All you have to do is write your number as it is. However, understanding your place value chart takes it to the next level. If you can understand what the place value chart is really trying to tell you, that can bring you to a deeper understanding of your number as a whole and what each and every individual number truly represents. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if you did, be sure to leave a like and hit the subscribe button. See you again next week.